So good morning, Pinnacle. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, today we are going to be looking at our personal faith. Do we have a personal faith that is based on religion? Or do we have a personal faith that is based on a relationship? In Romans 9, 16, it tells us, So then it does not depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Now, in the beginning, God created and it was all good. Adam and Eve had heaven on earth living in the Garden of Eden. They had a relationship with God. But then we all know the story, how sin entered into the world, and that relationship with God was now broken. And it wasn't just broken for them, it was broken for all of mankind. The fall of man was not a religious thing that happened, but a separation thing of the relationship between man and God. Now I want you to just please bear with me as I give you the definitions for the word religion and relationship in both the Latin and the Greek. The first is religion in the Latin form, and it comes from the word re -lagare. I guess I'm saying it right. <laughs> that means to refine or reconnect. And then the word for relationship in the Latin is relationum. And it means to be reconnected, carried back, and restored to a state or a condition. But let's also look at how these two words are used in the Greek in the New Testament. Uh, the first word is thres kai, kaia. It means the reverence of or worship of the gods. It is worship as expressed in ritual acts. And then the second word uh, for religion is ethel of reskia. <laughs> it is a self-imposed or self-willed religion. And that word is only used one time in the, in the Greek in the New Testament. And then the other word that is used, and it's only also used one time in the New Testament. Yeah, I know. Uh, are we ready? Dice he dahi monstros. And that is one monstrous of a word. And it means being very fearful of gods and being superstitious. Now, that is a lot there, right? But there are also two different words um, used in the Greek for the word relationship. And it's katalage, and it means to be reconciled, reconciliation, we might say. And dikaiosis is justification or acquittal. So back to the fall of man where the relationship between man and God has been severed, has been broken, has been destroyed. Because there is, um, I'm sorry, what is, oh yeah, I do want that. Because there's no relationship, then that opened up the door for what? Religion, to enter into the world. It was man's way of reaching out to God. He wants to be re reconnected with God. And, you know, he tries to do it, you know, in his own way, on his own merits. But that just does not work. <coughs> That's what caused false religions to be born. And over the course of history, mankind keeps trying uh, religion, but it just continues to fail. It always fails. And the reason why is because of sin. Sin will always separate us from God. It does not matter how many good works we do. It does not matter how many things we try to do, how many doors we knock on, how many jumping jacks we make, how many often we go to church. We will never be righteous enough to be standing in a right relationship with God. Never. That is religion in the purest form. Mankind trying on his own merits to reach God. And because of that, many isms and cults have formed over the centuries, causing man to think that he can make himself right with God and have that relationship reconnected. The scripture tells us differently. Jesus said to, to him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. A works faith religion always puts man in bondage where they are always trying to get right with God, but always, always, always falling very short. They never are sure if they have done enough. You know that? You're never sure if you've done enough. You believe that way. And you're always striving, but you'll never obtain. And let me just give you three examples. The first is in Mormonism. Mormonism. Their conditions to enter the celestial kingdom, as they call it, is first you have to believe in Jesus. Sounds good, right? Well, hold it right there because their Jesus is not the same Jesus of the Bible, by the way. Their Jesus is a brother to Satan. Does that sound like your Jesus? No, better not. The one that works. Okay? And the next thing you have to do to get to heaven is you have to be baptized in the LDS church. You have to have this some sort of ongoing repentance, always being sorrowful. You have to support the prophets and the giving of your money. You have to receive the LDS ordinances and keep them. Uh, two of them are baptism for the dead yeah. and marriage in the temple. And here's the kicker. You have to live faithfully according to God's commands. Well, right there, that just eliminates everybody because we know that's impossible. Nobody can do that. The next example is the Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses believe that salvation requires faith in Jesus. Oh, guess what? Their Jesus isn't the same Jesus either, like the Mormons. Their Jesus is, they believe, is the Archangel Michael. They believe uh, to obtain salvation, you must you know, belong to the Watchtower organization, right? And you have to adhere to their strict rules. You have to be obedient to its rules. More works. Again, what are you going to do when you fail at one of those rules? The third example is Islam. Islam. To get to heaven, you must avoid sinning along with performing good deeds. In Islam, you must do more good than bad. Some sort of scale. But how do you ever know? How do you ever know you've done more good than you've done bad? When will you be good enough? Now, all three of these examples I just shared with you are all work-based religions. But let me give you one more. If, is the person who says, well, I believe in God, right? And they are nice, kind, generous. They go to church, and they'll even tell you that, hey, I even pray. I pray, right? But when you try to have fellowship with and you try to talk to them about salvation through Christ, they default. They default back to, hey, I'm okay. I am a good person. I go to church. I am a member. I tithe. I serve. I, 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 I. But these types of people do not have a relationship with God, but only religion. A religion that they believe makes them okay with God because of what they have done. But hopefully one day, I pray they will come to the truth and see that it's not what they do for God. It is what God has done for them. And the good news is that God has made a way for them and us. God has always wanted a relationship with us, wanting to reconnect us wanting to carry us back because we all have strayed and he will restore us to him. Genesis 3.15 tells us uh, what God said to the enemy after the, he caused man to fall. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is God right from the beginning telling us in his word that he is going to restore our relationship back to him one day through 
Jesus Christ. Here he told the serpent, yeah, you're going to bite him on the foot. You're going to try and stop him from saving mankind, but you are going to fail. My anointed one is going to crush you on the head. Praise God. Though you have tricked men into disobeying me, causing a separation between man and myself, I am going to make things right. I will send my son, and by him and only him, he will restore this relationship between man and myself. Isn't that a great, a great promise? And that is exactly what happened. Jesus came and died on the cross, shedding his blood for the remission of our sins. That whoever would believe on him would be saved and their relationship with God would be restored. What is that wonderful? Because of the work Jesus did on the cross, no longer do we need religion. We no longer need to try to reach God on our own merits, trying, 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 building that ladder up to heaven. It's not going to work. God sent Jesus Christ to earth to restore us back into a right relationship with him. Let's look again at that word relationship. <laughs> the Latin form. Relational. is to be reconnected, carried back, and restored to a state or condition. That is what Christ did. He came, and through him, he carried us back, and he restored us. Back into a right standing for God the Father. It's only through Christ. And now let's look at the Greek meaning of it. The two words, pano alage, to be reconciled, and dikaiosis, justification, acquittal. So let's see how these words fit into scripture, these two. Romans 5, 9 to 11. It says, therefore, we have now been, there's the word, justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Romans 5, 10, for while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. 5.11. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received what? Reconciliation. Through Christ, we are justified by his blood, and we are reconciled back to God. Now notice in these verses, it never once mentioned anything that we do or can do. Nothing that we did, nothing that we do it is by God through Christ. Let's look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21. I should say 2 Corinthians, I apologize. I have 1 Corinthians, I thought I changed it. Anyway. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I'll read that again. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If we are in Christ, we become righteous before God. He's the one who restores us back to having a right relationship with him. Religion is man trying to make himself right before a holy God. Relationship is God doing the work, restoring us back to him through his son. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. So religion or relationship. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. That's what it says. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. 
is what by grace we have been saved. We can only have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. There's no, there's no other way. No other way. It doesn't matter how many good works we do, how many things, how many times we go to church, how much money we give. It's only because of what Christ did on the cross for us. And I say there's many, many people who come to church and they're faithful in all the things that they do but they miss the most important part, and that's the relationship thing. They think they're okay because of what they have done, but it's all about what Christ has done. And if we're not, you know, seeking Him first, and living our lives for Him, you know what? Maybe we need to go to the heart doctor and find out what's going on, because God wants a relationship with us, and we can have it through Jesus Christ. We can have it through Jesus Christ. He made the way. And it's just it's such a neat thing. You think about it, you know. God is called Abba in the, in the scriptures. And Abba is what we is the word daddy. It's a relationship we have. We have a relationship with God because of his son. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this lesson. Uh, again, Lord, I just pray for those who are here today. And Lord, just thank you for the blessing of this word. And Lord, I thank you that we have a relationship with you. And Lord, uh, may we walk in your truth and in your spirit. And Lord, uh, thank you that you do forgive us when we, we, we stray. Lord, just we have that advocate, your son, on our behalf. Lord, I thank you that you are our father and that we are grafted in as your children and we have that relationship with you. And Lord, so we praise you and we thank you for that. And so in Jesus' name we pray and all God's children say, Amen. Amen.